Hi, thanks for watching. I'm Nuno Simões from UNAM uh, here in Mexico, and I'm going to talk to you about the Gulf of Mexico Coral Reef Report Card. This is a trinational effort towards strengthening the management of coral reefs in the Gulf of Mexico. This was the product of a workshop that was held in November last year, 2019, here in Merida, Yucatan, Mexico. Um, I will start with um, the idea of what a report card is for those of you uh, who doesn't know or a scorecard. So these are very synthetic documents with uh, very low density information on this top of a pyramid. They are based on sound scientific knowledge, sound scientific data, as you can see on the bottom of this pyramid in yellow. These tend to be the primary and supporting documents produced by the scientific community, such as ourselves. And these are many documents, many disciplines. They are very, very high on information density and very low synthesis. So if you go up the ladder into the orange bit, you have technical documents to tend to synthesize a little bit of what is known, and those are used by the management community. Eventually, these technical reports are also condensed into summary reports that are used by the stakeholder groups and officials to have a more uh, broad view on a particular aspect. And eventually, you have these report cards, which are uh, perhaps you can see them as simpler documents, but they have much more synthetic information. They don't have so much information density, but they synthesize a lot of information. They are focused on decision makers and the general public, so they are communication uh, strategies that are very, very useful to engage with the public and those who take decisions. This involves five steps. Uh, normally, uh, you have this the initial step with what is the big pictures. You have to identify your coral reef values and threats. What are the things that are uh, that you want to conserve and preserve and what are the impacts that are affecting those particular variables. Eventually, once you know that, you have to associate that with indicators. You have to know what do you need to measure, what do you need to follow through time, has it uh, progress, and you have to choose the indicators. And then it comes to the third step, which is perhaps the most critical one, which is where you define what's good and what's bad, what is healthy. And you define the thresholds of those indicators, and this tends to be where <laughs> most of the time people get a little bit, uh, you don't have exactly agreements on this. But uh, I should have said that it's very important that all stakeholders and agendas and sectors are in the table, so you eventually get to some consensus. Uh, once you define those thresholds, then you go into step number four. How does it add up? You have to calculate the scores and determine the grades. Uh, and eventually, you know how the different areas are. And you end up with a five the step, which is the most important one from my point of view, which is you have to find out what's the story, what's the narrative, how is your particular coral reef is doing? Is it going okay? Is it going bad? And you have to communicate those results to the wider public. So the process enables great benefits. It creates a full multi-stakeholder participation. What this means is that you have people from uh, different sectors, stakeholders sitting at the same table. And they bring different agendas into this table. And this is very, very important because it's enriching and everybody contributes to the solution. And everybody also uh, contributes to the, the impact. So having everybody at the same table creates at the beginning some tensions sometimes, but I truly recommend uh, you to have this fully multi-stakeholder uh, participation. It also forces critical review of available data. What do we have back in time to evaluate some of these indicators? Because sometimes people will say, oh, we need to measure this and that, but there's no data. So you need to focus on what data there, are, there is and what data is available. Sometimes there is data, but you can't access to it. And eventually you get to this uh, moment where you force goal setting and status assessments. Where do we envision the coral reef system to be in 10, 20 years? And 
what are we going to measure to make sure that we are approaching that goal uh, in the future? And after some, uh, depends on your group, but sometimes uh, you have these kind of uh, rough discussions, but eventually you create a shared vision, you create, you build up a community, you, you, you it strengthen the, the confidence on each other and it, it enable people to talk on different uh, aspects and different views, uh, it's very, very enriching. And it's one of the best things from these uh, exercises and methodology. So here you have an example on the Orinoco River Basin. Uh, you have six uh, indicators on different colors, for example, green for biodiversity, blue for water, and you have sub-indexes that contribute to this industry. So you have a hierarchy, you have kind of a ladder, um, kind of a very... Uh, many uh, variables and indicators contributing to one uh, water uh, indicator that eventually contributes to the Orinoco Basin um, final score. So it doesn't need to be balanced. You can see that the biodiversity, they only have data for four uh, variables, whilst the blue one has, the water has like seven variables. This can obviously be, should be, uh, evaluated for each different region. Each different region gets a particular grade, and when you add up all of those, you end up with a final grade uh, for the region. You always need to put the grading uh, scheme on your right-hand side so people can understand what's good and what's failing. And uh, on the left-hand side, you can see that there is this B-, minus. okay, so it's doing oh, not so bad, but you have this two different um, layers or um, hierarchies or, of what contributed to that B-, and everything is condensated in one single image. You can see an example of this for the Long Island Sound. On the left-hand side, you have five indicators, and those five indicators for these uh, uh, six different regions, and you can very quickly spot what's the region that is not doing very well and what are the indicators that are contributing to that. So very powerful communicating skill, uh, sorry, instrument. It's not based on like very, um, it's, it's based on science, but you don't have the scientific detailed data on that document. It's a very efficient and useful communication strategy. You have all of this numerality of people kind of having positive uh, feedback on the exercise on many different uh, areas. And we had the opportunity to work with the folks from the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science, Integration and Application Network. They've been doing this all over the world, a lot of experience. And I must say that it's key to work with an experienced facilitator and these guys know how to do that and they are also impartial they just come from the outside and they don't have any particular agenda on this so that's very very important so we had other gulf of mexico coral um, sorry gulf of mexico report card examples the last two on the bottom right hand side the 2017 yucatec and coast report card and the last year texas coast uh, report card you also have report cards on coral reefs. On the top of the slide, you have the fantastic uh, work done by healthy reef folks on the Caribbean, and they go back to 2008. That means that we have 12 years of evaluating the uh, Mesoamerican reef system. So we, you have a narrative of 12 years on how these reefs are doing. And also, know on the bottom of the slide, you can see that they very recently issued the and marine sanctuaries that they are in charge of, and they've done this exercise on all of those reefs. And you can very quickly see that American Samoa and the Pacific Remote Islands are doing much better than the Guam and the North and Mariana Islands, even if you don't, you haven't seen the, the report, just because of the grades. How did this start? This started by initiative on the Heart Research Institute. They've been instrumental on this. They created the trinational meetings where you have people from Mexico, Cuba, and the United States discussing uh, issues related to the marine realm of the Gulf of Mexico. And in 2008, towards the Ocean Foundation, they have been very instrumental as well, uh, building on the sister sanctuaries agreement between the Obama administration and Cuba on the Florida Keys and the Guanacabibes and I think some other MPAs on Cuba. 
uh, they've done this Red Gulf, which is building up on a network on uh, marine protected areas all over the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So, <coughs> so you have different institutions, sorry. You have the UNAM and the Heart Research Institute together with the Ocean Foundation uh, and many other institutions that are contributing to this, NGOs, governments, and academia as well. And the vision is the scientific characterization of the environmental condition of the coral reefs of the Gulf of Mexico. And we, will, we want to produce a product that is widely accessible, can communicate and be understandable by stakeholders, legislatures, administrators, managers, scientists, and the general public. For that, we have three objectives. We want to provide the scientific information understanding to assess the health of the coral reef systems of the Gulf of Mexico and their links with humans. This is very important. Um, you, you have another uh, talk on the global coral reef where we focus on a particular coral reef on Caiuarcas. We also want to inform the decision-making process about the policies necessary to achieve the sustainability of a healthy Gulf of Mexico. And finally, we want to clearly demonstrate progress towards desired long-term goals. We want to conserve these reefs and we want to know clearly what we want to do and how we're going to achieve, how we're going to achieve it. Achieve it. So this is the Gulf of Mexico definition from Key Largo to Punta Jicacos and from Cabo Catoche to Cabo de San Antonio. We take, took that from the, the book that you can see in the center of the slide. There was a little bit of a debate, but that was the definition of the Gulf of Mexico. And here we also have a discussion on the preliminary uh, workshop on which reefs we're going to use. And we're only using the ones on purple or pink, and those are biogenic in origin. They are uh, uh, coral reef originated. But we also left the green and yellow ones, which is our, which are sorry, uh, hard substrate where you have coral species growing on them, not necessarily the, 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 they are coral reef in origin, but anyway. We also did an overview of available databases on uh, bibliographic. A lot of bibliography was downloaded from all these sources that you can see in the slide, and we plugged into data from all of these uh, sources of data from coral reefs, from Agra, LTV, Shreve Base, Carib Node, InfoCianos de Mexico from Conabio, iNaturalist, amongst others. And this particular one, the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative, GRITSI, uh, it's a public repository where all the data that was created by the funds from Gomri for those uh, who work in the region uh, has to be uploaded and is deposited on this repository, GRITSI. And this is publicly available, and we've been using a couple of the uh, data sets there. We also use long-term monitoring reports from NOAA. They have done an extensive monitoring work on the marine sanctuaries all over the world, but specifically on the ones on the Gulf of Mexico, the Flower Gardens and the Florida Keys. And we use data on the Gulf Base, and we want to promote uh, monitoring programs such as the ones used by Reef Life Survey, Marine Biodiversity Observation Network, and their bridges towards the NOAA long-term monitoring programs. We used participatory methodology in the uh, workshops using different uh, exercises. You can see those at the video at the end of this talk. Uh, and we have uh, an envision for uh, a formal report card that will span towards like a year, a year and a half uh, with three workshops in Mexico to enable the U.S. and the Cuban colleagues to meet on um, uh, in Mexico, where they're both allowed to, to meet and work to, towards this uh, shared goal. Uh, so this is the plan we have. And on the preliminary report card, we initiated with this. You can see some of the examples on the video at the end. And we end up with, with this uh, map, uh, where you can see that the Florida Keys and La Habana are not doing that well. And the Veracruz, towards the left uh, bottom side of the slide, is not doing that well either. And the Campeche Bank in the Yucatan reefs are reasonably well conserved, as well as the Flower Garden Banks. And the left tip of Cuba, Golfo de Guanacabibes, have the most spectacular and most pristine, um, not pristine, but well-preserved uh, coral reefs at the moment. 
So all the information is accessible at the Biodiversidad Marina de Yucatan Research Group at UNAM where we work. You have the web page at the bottom of the slide. Just click there and uh, go to uh, this section of the web page where you have the document. Uh, this is the front and the back pages. Uh, you have the cover pages where we created this uh, visual glossary that you have on the right hand side of the slide where we identified six indicators and we kind of graphically depicted how these uh, indicators are when they're stressed and when they are desired. So with those in mind, we build up the uh, map that you have in the center and we had some success stories on the sides. The documents can be downloaded in English and Spanish from the web page as well as the workshop report, as you can see here on the bottom, uh, you just go and can download these documents and go through the details, please do. Uh, you also have a video on the web page where you can see how the, the workshop uh, went and uh, the participant comments on the, the results and the methods and so on. So if you want a little bit more detail, please do see that video. And we already initiated the communication strategy of what we've done. And it's been amazing. After this workshop, we already preparing workshops in the future to make sure that we have standard, standardized monitoring techniques, both in the US, Mexico, and Cuba. So our data is comparable. We also pushing for local MPAs and single reef report cards efforts with the Alacranes, Reef, Veracruz, Caiuarcas here in Mexico. And we know the Cuban folks are doing the same thing in Cuba. And obviously, Flower Gardens in Florida, they already have the NOAA report cards um, back in time. Uh, we're also working together uh, on joint efforts to get funding to potentiate this. And we all share this vision of a centralized data repository where the information will be available. And with that... I thank you so much for watching. I think I stepped a little bit out of time. I hope that I didn't bother you too much. I will be willing to answer all your comments down on the video. So please do ask questions and comments and I will be uh, happy to answer them. And I will also share this with all the uh, colleagues that participated on that so they can uh, tell you and answer your questions as well. Thank you so very much.